So is that set? Everybody happy? Okay. Hey, good morning. Thank you for coming. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, how many of you have a Drupal 8 site running already? Wow. And how many of those are production sites for clients? Wait, keep your hands up. Woo, awesome. Okay. Um, so this is a living, kind of a living presentation. I've done it a few times since February, and um, you might have seen me working on my slides desperately now, because this situation is essentially changing every day, and um, I think the, there are a couple of different messages in here and, and a couple of different takeaways. Um, I would be f flattered if this, um, and and happy if this turned into a bit of a discussion. If we have time at the end, maybe to just um, have a couple questions, find out what people are doing with Drupal 8 and what your impressions are, because I think um, it's starting to, f to me, it's starting to feel like we're getting really close. Um, I uh, work for Acquia. Oh, hey, so none of this is on the, that's also really exciting, wait. Aha, there, see, okay, right. I work for Acquia. My title is changing to just evangelist because um, in a lot of contexts, we think that the open source battle is won. Interestingly enough, with Drupal Geddon and Heartbleed and a few things that happened last year, all of a sudden security and open source is back on the table in discussions. But um, Acquia figures that I'm, I should be allowed to be excited about things in public be, besides just the open source proprietary battle in the next year, and I'm kind of interested to see where that goes. In January, I was at Drupal Camp Brighton, and a guy who owns a Drupal agency in London said to me, hey, so you're coming to the CXO day for Drupal Camp London, and you know, that talk that you proposed is nice and all, but actually what we really want to know is what's going on with Drupal 8, and you know the people at large scale Drupal, and you talk with a lot of people out there. We want to know what those big companies are, are planning around Drupal 8. They're the thought leaders, they're always so advanced, you know, they know what's going on. So why don't you find out what they're thinking about Drupal 8 so we, the agencies, we can respond to their needs and their plans, and then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be on top of this stuff and it'll be great. And I talked with Mike Myers, who runs large-scale Drupal, and I do know a lot of the people there, and we did a little internal survey, and I spoke with several people at very, very large Drupal companies, <clears throat> uh, Drupal using companies, and, you know, we're talking Fortune 500, Fortune 100 media companies, people like that. And they said to me, so you're in contact with all those digital agencies who are the thought leaders around what's going on with Drupal 8. And we would love to know what their plans are so that we can react to, and, and, you know, get the most out of it when it's ready. And so I found myself in the, in, uh, in the, middle, of the, in the middle of this and um, did some research, had a lot of conversations with people, and came up with this. It is... Um, Roughly three sections. I want to talk very briefly about what we're getting with Drupal 8 at the highest level. I think it should all be familiar to you. I want to talk about the business case around <clears throat> what a business might want to invest in, in Drupal 8 right now and actually cases where Drupal 7 makes a lot more sense. Then I'll talk really briefly in Drupal terms about where we are um, with the decision when to start using Drupal 8, and then I have some examples of Drupal 8 production sites out in the wild. So, does any of this look unfamiliar to anyone? That's great. Um, when we talk with businesses, we don't talk about widgets and, and technologies, though. We need to tell people about the benefits of what they're getting. And um, so, this whole idea of having a um, you know, multi-device reality. We address that in Drupal 8 really well. We've got HTML5 in there. So you know, we'll be able to have Drupal sites on the Apple Watch, presumably, and whatever else comes. It, the, um, the native, this feeds into this uh, REST-first architecture internally and externally. We can function as a web service and function as a backend to any sort of a native app, any sort of another service, even, even just as a, as a content management engine that doesn't produce any kind of a website. We're very, very well positioned to do that, and it's very exciting. 
Uh, we've got a really great authoring experience. I work um, most days of the week now on the back end of a, I mean, producing content on a Drupal 8 website, and it's nice, it feels nice, it's great. And um, so the, the people who live in the back end of websites from day to day should have a more pleasant experience. And for us as site builders, right, what's amazing about the back end is it's all built out of views. So if you know how to build a view, you know how to build a custom Drupal back end. And remember, in Drupal 5, 6, 7 days, changing the back end of Drupal is something none of us wanted to do um, if we could possibly avoid it. Um, from a business perspective, we have an incremental release cycle. For the first time, we're going to have this idea that 8.1 will be an actual feature release. So a living, breathing release of Drupal will get new features in it. And this is also the first time that we're not going to up, open up Drupal 9 head as, Drupal, as soon as Drupal 8 is released. So there are a bunch of core developers who've given us amazing code over the year who've never worked on the production release version of Drupal. And have never sort of had to experience the feedback of people who live it on the front lines day to day. So I think that there's going to be a real, a new kind of synergy in our community and a new kind of innovation is going to be possible with the living, breathing results so that every six months we can actually recognize a problem or see an opportunity and take advantage of it now rather than in three to five years. That's very, very exciting. Multilingual is amazing in Drupal 8 and I've worked on some of this already and it is so baked, so ready, so incredible in Drupal 8 already. Um, it's, it's, and especially for us here in Europe, this is a, an amazingly, this will be a huge business advantage for, for building Drupal multilingual sites for clients. We will, save, we will save incredible amounts of time and money to deliver better experiences than we've ever been able to before. Configuration management uh, lets us have very uh, cost efficient and um, reliable deployment. As Drupal agencies, that's going to be great for us. Um, putting in all sorts of, you know, cooperating with a broader community of open source um, software projects allows us to have more secure code, have more eyes on our code, have more people collaborating with us. So we're going to have a lot more possibility for innovation and, and synergies with them. The... The internals have been rewritten in a very sensible way. Uh, for example, this will allow developers to work much more efficiently. Um, how many internal systems are there in Drupal 7? 21? Something. Something like that. They all just came about since Drupal 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they developed however Earl Miles or Larry or Chicks or whoever it was made perfect sense at the time, and it's completely legitimate, but there are 21 ways, different ways of doing things, and each system you have to know exactly how it works and how it stores data and, and how it passes things on, and you know, array magic and all of that wonderful stuff in D7. Drupal 8, every single internal systems, CRUD operations, all the fundamentals that are universal across all the internal systems are all done the same way. So you spend one weekend and you learn how that works, and you know everything. And all you have to do is know each system's specialty on top of that. So once you're on top of OO coding and what's going on, you've got a system where you know where everything works, even if you've never looked in that corner of the code before. That's pretty exciting. And the discussion about decoupled architecture, headless Drupal, whether that's good or bad or not, it certainly gives us more opportunities to have more kinds of front ends. Um, I'm kind of a fan of mostly of staying with Twig and making um, when I'm building real websites because I want the advantage of all of the translation and everything, the real tight integration with the Drupal UI and the front end. There are a lot of great reasons to have an Angular front end to power a native app, etc. Wow, Drupal 8's amazing. Are we ready for it? When is it going to be ready for us? This is a very hot topic. As we know, this is a, a boff a session from Montpellier from the developer days. Was anyone there? And were you in this boff? Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a hot topic, and it says uh, many agencies and end users tasked with starting a medium or big project today wonder whether they should start on Drupal 8 or not. I'm not going to give you an answer, but I'd like to give you food for thought. Um, this is a, um, a familiar curve. Have, is everyone familiar with this sort of adoption curve? And the idea of, uh, there are different ways of labeling these things. You know, you have, when things start off, you have the, uh, the, the innovators and you have the early adopters and the maturity and, and, and then the decline, uh, you know, late adopters and so on. 
and you have this, this chasm where you have a new technology release and it's wh whether, you, whether you hit mainstream, whether you hit critical mass on that or not. I think with Drupal 8, we don't have that problem. I think it's going to be fine. But right now in Drupal 8, we're somewhere down in that gray part, actually, right? It's, it's not ready. It's not, it's not prime time ready for the majority of people. <clears throat> but if you want a real business advantage, if you want to be in now, know the technology intimately, hit the ground running when it's released, be ready to walk into your first client meeting the day after it goes 8.0.0, you need to be involved with it now. Um, businesses, your clients who are looking to invest in something, you can tell them if they invest a little bit more right now, they're going to get absolutely the most uh, for their money by investing at the beginning of the cycle and Drupal production cycles tend, um, you know, once you factor in support, t t tend to be multi-year deals. That's pretty great. There's other businesses when they're dealing with mission critical, large installations, things where they really make their money, they need to be safe. People who need safety need to adopt Drupal 8. Not now. Certainly not now. So this timeline that I built is, is sort of from now until late 2016. Um, so, right. Historically, it's taken the contributed module repository about a year to catch up with the major release. Drupal 8 is going to need fewer contributed modules, and there's some architecture that goes on in there, some things, if you haven't been playing with it, there's some things that are astonishing. Um, the fact that everything is an entity, and any entity can refer to any other entity, and the fact that everything is a view in the back end, um, allows us to make incredibly, incredibly powerful things in the UI without resorting to writing module code. Um, uh, Michel Schmidt and Amazie Labs needed Node queue for a Drupal 8 site that they have live, and Node queue has not been ported to Drupal 8. And they said to themselves, "Well, um, you know, we can put a we can put a block in a no uh, in a node essentially because it's an entity, and that block refers to another entity, and then we just stack those up behind them and turn them on and off. And actually, we have a Node queue built in the UI." I think there are going to be a lot of um, in incredible innovations that we're not aware of yet because of this um, unified, sensible architecture that we have. Um, right, so I think, that, I think that to be an innovator, anyone who's, 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 who's using this from now until we get to 8.0.0, which, um, you know, there's a movement that we hope that that's going to happen in September. It would be nice. It would be awesome. Right? Drupal 8 release party at Bar in Barcelona would be would be a blast, right? Yes. Um, when do I have to stop? Oh, no, I mean, okay, thanks. Thanks, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I meant, just meant, when does the session actually end? Okay. Okay. So catch my attention when there's 10 minutes to go, please. Thanks. Um, and, you know, when does safety start for you kind of depends on you and your company. And um, Christoph van Thomme, who's here today, not here, uh, and his company Pronovix have started an interesting service called d8upgrade.org. And if I've understood it right, you can <coughs> add a list of the modules that you rely on in a Drupal 7 project to this and this site will monitor it and give you notifications about the status of those modules um, in Drupal 8 as they come. I think that's a pretty cool, I think that's a pretty cool indicator um, on the one hand, but I also think that as, as I said, when we get into it, it the one-to-one -one module mapping is not going to be, not going to be exactly, exactly right. We'll see. Um, I mean, for example, you don't need any contrib modules for multilingual now, so. So hey, if you get clients coming to you and we need a prod, we, you know, they're either very upset because they have a Drupal 7 project um, that's working great for them and now they've heard that Drupal 8's coming and they're worried, right? Or if they're coming <coughs> and, 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 they, and they want you to, they said, we heard Drupal 8's coming, we want this now, build it in Drupal 8 for us. <coughs> There are a lot of really, really good reasons not to go anywhere near Drupal 8 right now. It is not production ready. You, there are no head-to-head -head upgrades. You have to know a lot of PHP to survive some of the bugs and some of the stuff that's still not fixed inside. So this is the same 
curve as the last thing with the bars in it, and you can say that Drupal 7 is somewhere at the top of this maturity level, okay, and that Drupal 8, you see, is the next one, and, that's, and it's just at the very, very, very beginning. Anyone who's worried about their investment in Drupal 7, you should say, this has been money incredibly well spent. And Drupal 6, which is still supported today, um, has been supported for seven years at this point, okay? Drupal 7 is not going away any time. Drupal 7's already been out for four years. It's got an incredibly sophisticated, mature module ecostructure. If somebody needs a complicated project delivered today, right? Everybody's tooled up for Drupal 7. You know it backwards, inside and out, forwards. You know how to deploy it. You know how to maintain it. It is secure. Um, it's testable. Whew, huge advantage over Drupal 6, right? If they need something big and complicated today, you can deliver it, and you can deliver it fast. And that's, um, in Drupal, that's always one of our big selling points, right? We can, uh, you know, quick time to market. So if they need something big and complicated now, put them on Drupal 7 and tell them, Drupal 7 is absolutely, I guarantee you, going to be supported by the community for another five years at a minimum. And, you know, if it's, all, if, if, if it's a project where 80, 90% of the functionality is coming, is going to be able to come out of contrib anyway, and you don't have to in invest huge amounts of time writing new code, Drupal 7 is the way to go. And will cost them less money and cost you a lot, of, a lot less headaches over time. Tell them, if Drupal 7 can do their site right now, tell them that until they need a feature that Drupal 7 can't handle and will never be able to handle, like, this is money well spent, this is an investment that will amortize and pay for itself over the next few years, and when that killer feature comes that Drupal 7 can't handle, right, then we'll talk about an upgrade to Drupal 8. And upgrades to Drupal 8 are, are interesting and different beasts. Um, and we've got the migrate module built in to take content from Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 and put it in Drupal 8 applications. I've got a cool example of that coming. Um, um, oh, Drupal 8's RESTful, so actually you can import things all sorts of exciting ways. Um, you can also import Typo3 content or WordPress or Joomla content because migrate's built into Drupal 8. That's kind of a cool business advantage. So, Also, because Drupal 8 has this incremental release cycle, I presume that Drupal 8 is going to live longer. And as a community, we've made a promise to always support two major versions at this point. So I think that the support life for Drupal 7 is actually going to be longer than for any other previous version. These are all ways to help you talk clients off the cliff who are desperate to get into Drupal 8 now, right? When you don't want to be messing with that, you want to be doing your business and you want to be providing them the best uh, you know, website that you can today. So here's some different ways, here's some different ways to think about it. Here's some, um, why would you choose Drupal 7 right now? Why would you choose Drupal 8 right now? Forgive me while I, oh look. My, <laughs> so if you need to build something that's public facing and, and, and large, and complicated, right? Probably want to put it on Drupal 7 right now. Um, but speaking of investment, now this is internal to your business and not so much about external clients. If you want to, um, if you want to build a product, if you want to make the leap from service com company to product company, and I know uh, uh, some people who are thinking about that, you want to build your product, you want to invest in research and develop in Drupal 8 right now, because it's amazing and because you'll get the most out of your investment for that. It's a great time to be thinking about products and absolutely think about doing them in Drupal 8. If you're prototyping stuff, if you're testing stuff, if you're doing internal stuff, you should be getting to know Drupal 8 so that after DrupalCon Barcelona, when Drupal uh, 8 is released, um, that you'll be ready to provide services externally as well. If you need to get something out fast, do it with Drupal 7. If you've got a client who's like, hey, we need this thing, and we kind of want it at some point, and it doesn't matter if they have it now, or in September, or, or December, or, or, or a year from now, you know, if they can live on, on what they've got, and you've got their business anyway, um, if they can wait six months, Eight months, it's probably, probably, you know, if everybody can accept that, that's an interesting case where you might want to say, we think 
in six or eight months that we can actually deliver on Drupal 8 and then it has all these advantages as a platform. Let's, look, let's revisit this in six months. That's not, that's not crazy talk. Um, unless your sales pipeline is you know, suffering or whatever, then you might want to have a different conversation. Um, Drupal 7 is the most fully featured, you know, our favorite CMS of all time. It's amazing. We can deliver anything we can think of already. If it comes to huge complex functionality, do Drupal 7 right now. Drupal 7 is not going away. If you really want to launch something on Drupal 8 right now, um, you, can do, you can just about do a blog. You can do a multilingual um, kind of brochure sites. You can do really beautiful sites. If you get to where people have to log in and do user-generated content or groups or any of that, it's probably beyond what it can really handle easily right now. Um, unless you're willing to make an enormous investment. And I've got a couple of, cases, a couple of uh, examples of both kinds of sites right now. But um, if you, essentially, if you want to do a sort of a brochure site, right, that pretty much only needs core, and core gives you blocks and, and nodes and multilingual really super reliably, um, and the twig in the front end, OK, that's a, cool, that's a good reason to do it. Um, like I said, mission critical, large, complex, user generated content, Sort of not on the cards right now. It's getting close. Um, you've got your established business practices in the way uh, already set up. I said that. Oh, Drupal 7 is secure and stable, right? And Drupal 8 is absolutely not uh, stable and is not actually security tested yet. So if you're going to host that Drupal 8 brochure site, you better put it in isolated, sandboxed, separate infrastructure from everything else that you're running. Do you want to run that? Do you want to pay for it? Do you have the expertise to maintain it? And by the way, don't launch a Drupal 8 site unless you've got in-house real PHP expertise right now. If you can run a PHP debugger, if you can handle you know, finding the white screen of death and, then, and, and figuring out why that's going on, great le learning, great training for your employees, a great way to contribute back to the project by finding those bugs and reporting them and fixing them and submitting patches, right? But if you are an agency and you're, fo you're focused on production and you don't necessarily have that deep symphony or, or deep PHP expertise, doing much more than playing with Drupal 8 internally and getting ready for it and learning now um, might be beyond what you, you, you want to invest in. <clears throat> um, there's no reason not to build a Drupal 8 uh, 7 site right now and upgrade later. The upgrades uh, look exciting and different, as I said. Um, and, of course, if you need to be training people in-house, um, Drupal 8 is what you should be training, on them, uh, training them on. So, there's a few different ways to look at this decision. Where are we? Well, as of this morning, as of about a half an hour ago, I count four criticals that are tagged with D8 upgrade path, and um, they... That's only, I mean, that's only four. It's not bad, all right? And if we can uh, uh, get these closed as a community, what happens then? Um, the core team will then open a, a, a beta to beta upgrade path. They will promise at that point that um, they won't break your site anymore upgrading from beta to beta to beta versions. This is, this, when they release a beta path between a beta upgrade path, that's a sign when you should start seriously looking at production and pre-production sites. Still small, still careful, but at that point, they're promising that from that moment on through 8.0 and that um, upgrades are not going to break anything and upgrades are just going to work you know, as automatically as they ever do. So um, the D8 upgrade path criticals are an interesting list to watch right now. If you want to help out, there's the D8 Accelerate program where you can make donations and you can also submit projects. There are a good, I don't know, I didn't count them this morning, but I don't know, 30 or 50 issues that have, that have been um, worked on or closed using money from the D8 Accelerate. There have been a couple code sprints. It's been, it's been pretty awesome. So the Drupal Association and Drupal shops and individuals are contributing to this because you know, everybody actually wants to get to where there's, I don't have to give this presentation anymore. This node from the developer days in Montpellier and um, this very rough set of notes 
give some really interesting perspectives from the front lines of people working on this and with questions about that. Um, it's, it's worth reading, it's pretty interesting. And there is a project called Head to Head, which has just been opened up for D8, and that is actually for people who are running D8 sites now and um, want to upgrade them, they're like helper scripts and stuff to get through those upgrades before the upgrade path is there, and it's a great place to learn and contribute if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Don't forget d8upgrade.org as well to look at your contrib in Drupal 7. So hey, look at that beautiful site. Wait a minute. Ah. Oh. So, who knows about Drupal.com? Right, hey, so we have a Drupal.com. That's running Drupal 8. I work on it most days of my week. I am on the content team for Drupal.com. Um, um, this site belongs to Dries. Acquia is a sponsor of that site along with a few other people and Acquia donates my time as a marketing author person like what my regular day job is to do case studies and other content for Drupal.com. So um, if your company has done marquee brand amazing Drupal builds for interesting famous companies, I'd really like to know about it and I'd really like to help you write or rewrite a Drupal case study about that. Um, we've got an amazing pipeline. I've discovered incredible, incredible projects. Um, I'm, I'm going to be uh, posting one soon about the Greenpeace volunteer platform that Gold Gorilla here in Holland built. Um, Travel.fiji is an amazing Drupal site that I discovered and wrote a case study about. Um, South China Morning Post in Hong Kong are huge Drupal fans and nobody's ever written about them and I, I managed to get a hold of one of their tech leads and he told me for 90 minutes basically how amazing Drupal is and how they've solved all the media problems in the world. And it was easy. So this is a really fun project for me um, and we're trying to build out this site and make it a living, breathing resource for you to send potential clients to, to like, hey, what's this Drupal thing about? Here, look at everybody who's using Drupal and, and here's how they're doing it. So um, Drupal.com is in Drupal 8. I met this guy called Chris Jolly in Vienna in the end of 2013 for some, for some fun reasons. I did two keynotes at Drupal Camp Vienna that year and I met this guy called Chris Jolly and he runs a company in Augsburg in Germany called OnTrack with a Q at the end and <clears throat> They do uh, C and all the versions of C development. They do legacy system integration. And basically, their specialty is solving hard problems and getting legacy systems to talk to the web. And they do e-commerce integrations. And I met this guy, and he said, so I'm here at this Drupal camp because I heard that you're putting Symfony into Drupal. And I'm a Symfony developer. And if it's true, then I never have to touch Typo 3 again. And so we spent a few hours together, had a few beers together, and I told him, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about, the, the, how the back end's working and all that. Fast forward to DrupalCon Amsterdam, and I ran into him in the exhibitors area. Ten minutes, thank you. I ran into him, I ran into Chris in the exhibitors area, and he's like, thank you for telling me all that stuff. I went home after Vienna, and I opened up Drupal 8, and... It's just a dialect of symphony, and told, I'm totally on top of that. And I've got a customer site live already on Drupal 8. <laughs> so Summer Cable is on Drupal 8, and it's a magnificent use of, of um, a, a bunch of these new principles that we got, the fully restful, uh, restful first architecture, the... the um, the sort of decoupled nature of it and, and how it's you know, a fantastic system for integration, except that this is not headless Drupal. This is the Drupal 8 front end that integrates in the back end with two different Oxide e-commerce instances. So the B2B and the B2C e-commerce instances are separate. And it's all tied together with a custom Symfony 2 application, uh, Symfony application to do OAuth to authentication, single sign-on across the whole platform. Fantastic. And it lets them do stuff like be on a call with a client and the sales guy can work in the... So the Oxide are, of course, in, uh, 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 
linked to logistics and ERP systems in their back end, in their warehousing. So the sales guys can be on the phone with a client and make a special offer and change the batch price on something and it automatically goes live on the website and the customer, while they're on the phone, can put that in his basket and buy it. It's so cool and so unexpected. There's a company called One Agency in Belgium and they got bought and they're part of the Aussie group and they are working on a product prototype called Lissa. And I, um, this is a, 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 a screenshot of an iPad app and this is essentially a second screen app for events. They built it out to do sports but they can do anything. So just really quickly, basically when there's a, you know, when you're watching whatever your match is on the TV and you wanna be keeping up with what's going on in the league, you can follow along on the second screen app and it's got a timeline. So, um, and, and you can hit any of these things on the timeline. There's a yellow card there and a goal and the different things that are going and you can hit those and you can get instant replays out of the second screen app. It's got social media integration so they, they, they can be ingesting and putting things in from a Twitter stream or what have you. Um, it involves a rabbit messaging queue, it's got web sockets of course, and it's a massively, massively, massively scalable platform and that's all Drupal 8. And, um, Here's a 90 second video that one agency just gave me the other week uh, to demo this and you know, it's advertising but it's cool and it's Drupal 8, so. <laughs> no? No sound? All right, hold on, keep my sound up. That's embarrassing. Um, let's see if it works here. Okay. Oh, there was no sound there. <laughs> I think there's a, yeah, there's a narration going on there that's not coming through here in this, in this version. So anyway, so you can see there's an editorial team and they're watching these games and um, they've got the ability, they've got the ability to send notifications out through the rabbit messaging queue and the web sockets that get pushed to the application and then you can choose what highlights you want and um, I've been talking with the team that, um, so like it's got all of your sports nut statistics in the world. You can put whatever you want into it, it's Drupal, right? And essentially all the push notifications are different content types and the editorial team can just create these and push them out. <coughs> and they've designed it so that it can work with Opera or so we could do it with conferences so that we could have uh, discussions going on at the same time. And um, They've open sourced this. This is, um, I believe this is, pieces of this are on Drupal.org and pieces of it are on GitHub already. It's called Lissa, L-I-S-S-A. -S -S and um, it's very, very cool. It's, it's already open sourced, as I said. And they're looking for customer, you know, client applications of this. So if anybody can think of a good use for it, um, talk with Eric Evrard at one agency. Amazie Labs built the um, Schweizerische Gemeinnützige Gesellschaft website and this is Drupal 8, and it's a wonderful brochure site, and it's multilingual. So, woohoo, French and German, you change it there. Um, Italian and uh, Romanche are coming. It's um, uh, uh, basically, they built this in Drupal 8 and gave it to the client and didn't tell the client about the technology, and the client enters their own content, does their own work, does everything. They don't know and they don't care, and it's a perfectly, wonderfully serviceable, regular informational website. So, um, you know, if you can handle the hosting and that other stuff that we talked about, then why not do it? Hey, so, when I was giving this talk at uh, Drupal, <coughs> Drupal Camp London CXO Day. Um, the guys from the guys from Druid.fi were there. Have you ever seen the the team from Druid.fi? It's a growing, really 
uh, growing, exciting Drupal agency in, in Helsinki. Um, the, uh, the CTO, his name is Ronnie, and he's about two meters tall. <laughs> and he's got black hair down to here and like covered it. He's totally metal. He's awesome. And I was saying, hey, so Drupal 8, there aren't so many sites online. He's like, um, actually, Jam, we have La Kerikeskos Ava already online. And uh, so La Kerikeskos, La Kerikeskos Ava is a private health provider in Finland, and they have this really super beautiful, responsive, everything else, Drupal 8 website. Um, Druid did a super cool thing um, that points the way again to this in innovation that's going to be possible. Druid built a Druid Drupal 8 front end and none of the authoring or backend functionality into the Drupal 8 site. Um, all of the staff, all of the people who deal with the admin on the backend, version one that was live to the public was, was fed by, by the old Drupal 7 website that all the authors knew and were comfortable using, and it was simply sent out as a web service to the Drupal 8 front end. I couldn't believe what they were telling me, but they did it. And they said, so basically what we want to do here, we've got the front end working. <laughs> Everybody knows how to use the Drupal 7. Now we can do feature for feature upgrades across the two platforms. Um, they tried that. In the end, they had time and, and uh, uh, I guess the budget. Eventually, this is now fully Drupal 8 and it all, it's all running in there. But the idea that you can do something like that, I never would have thought of it, right? But those crazy fins, they did it, and it's amazing. Uh, CH2M.com is a large logistics company, and this is Acquia's first Drupal 8 site. This is running on the Acquia cloud, and um, it is just a regular, very beautiful site. It's running on Drupal 8. Um, MD Systems in Switzerland built a very large media portal called Südostschweiz.ch. It's the, the beta version of this right now. It's the <coughs> third largest media organization in Switzerland, I think, third or fourth. And um, it's a very, very large portal. It's, um, and it, it's, it's uh, got crossover between their radio and their TV and their print and all, all the things that they're doing. This um, is built, as I said, by MD Systems. And this is hosted on... Um, oh, okay, have to fix that slide. This is hosted on platform.sh. So, we're gonna get great benefits from Drupal 8 as Drupal shops. If you wanna get ahead of the game, it's a great time to get into it. It's time to get ready for it. There are still plenty of reasons to talk customers off the D8 cliff right now. That'll change in a year, okay? These are the kind of things that you wanna do with Drupal 8 right now. Thank you so much for having me. One minute to go. Per perfect timing. Thank you for showing us how great Drupal 8 is and how great Drupal 7 still is. Yes. Thank you very much. We got a book for you. Thank uh, you. It's the What If book by XKCD. Oh, awesome. It's very awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks. So who's, who's running something in Drupal 8 in public in the wild right now that I should add to this? <laughs> Goldgorilla.com. Oh, hey, you're from them. I know that you're building a product. I know that you're planning a product internally too, right? I know, I know that you're working on a product, a secret product internally as well on Drupal 8. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, Gold Gorilla, I will put, I will put your site up. Um, although I think that the, um, I mean, amazylabs.com and metaltoad.com, um, I think that there, the original decision was, um, uh, when I was choosing these, you know, an agency's own website doesn't quite count as a client site, but. <laughs> was there anyone else? No? What, 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 have, what have you got? No, but that counts. So decoupled Drupal, that's the big thing. He said their D8 site doesn't have a front end. What does it do? It's a service with content. And then it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a data source for, for apps? For, uh, for like four or five Oh, okay. So it's a Drupal 8 data store for four or five Drupal 7 instances. That's cool. That's um, actually kind of the opposite of La Caricasco Salva. That's neat. Awesome. All right. Hey, I'll be here all day, and, and, and thank you so much again. Thanks for coming.